Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I'm going to show you how to make an animated music equalizer in Blender. It's going to be a quick and easy tutorial, so let's get started. Now you want to start off by selecting the lamp, so right click to select, and then click X to delete. And then you want to switch to Cycles Render for better shading. And you want to select the cube, click N to make the uh, cube setting show up, and change the scale of the cube. So click uh, 0.3 on the x-axis, 0.3 on the y-axis, and then 2 on the z-axis. And the next step is to make the origin point of this object go to the bottom of the uh, object. So click G set and grab the object on the z-axis. And just go to numpad 1 to go to the front view and then click G set again to make the 3D cursor be the same place as the bottom of the uh, object. And then you click on set origin and make the origin go to the 3D cursor. And now we have the origin of the object in the bottom of the um, object. And then you want to click Shift D to duplicate it. And after you click Shift D, you're going to click G, then X, then 1 to grab it one unit on the X axis. Then you're just going to repeat the process six times until you have seven like rectangular shaped objects. Okay, so now we have seven um, objects for the animation and we're gonna go into the settings and drag it down so that you can see all the names and we're gonna change the names. Okay, so call the first one 16 Hertz. So H and then a small set. And then you wanna change the name of the second one to 120 Hertz. So one, two, zero, H set and you're gonna see why we add these values to the names later on in the tutorial and the second one is gonna be 350 Hertz and the next one is going to be 600 Hertz and the um, next one is going to be 1 kilohertz And one after that is going to be 10 kilohertz. And the last one is going to be 16 kilohertz. Okay, so now we have all the names and we can start making the animation. So select the first um, object. And then we're going to go to the bottom of Blender and use the mouse wheel to move uh, right and click Delta Scale. And just save it. And the reason we use delta scale is because we want to use the sound waves of the song and make that one move the um, object up and down. And let's just find, I'm just going to give it a name in a folder. Okay, music, tutorial, and I'm going to find it and just give it a name and I'm going to be back in the tutorial. Okay, so we're back and now I'm going to open a new window to start importing the song. Okay, so go into Graph Editor and then when you click Key, so click the key and then you want to go into Delta Scale and disable X and Y axis and go into bake music and add in the song you want to add and make the frequency to 16 which is going to be the highest frequency so that we have different frequencies on each of the bars that we're going to animate for some reason in this song the 16 hertz frequency is very weak for some reason but it might be different in your song so it's going to depend on each of the different songs you're going to import. And as you can see, it works very well. So we can add it to the next uh, bar. Just make sure to go to the first frame and select it. And then we want to click on the key again and go to Delta Scale, disable X and the Y axis. Go into key, bake sound to F curves, curves, and then change it to 120. 
because it's the 120 hertz bar of course okay and if we click play again you can see it works perfectly and this one is going to be stronger further into the song so don't bother if it's a little bit weak in the animation click key again and make sure to disable x and y go to key bake sounds to f curves and then change it to 350 which is the name of the bar as well okay skylink bake sound to f curves and we click play and it works so just make sure to pause go back to the first frame that's very important that you go back to the first frame or else it's going to mess up the animation and click key again we're just going to repeat the process delta scale y and x axis disabled and click key big sound f curves now change this one to 600 add the song skylink okay so let's see what happens if you add the um, animation on a later frame and then we're just going to go back afterwards so let's go to this frame select the object make sure to select the key and then disable x and y delta scale go to key and then increase it to a thousand and select the song bake sounds to f curves and now if you click the animation you're going to see that the animation starts on this frame about frame 50 and does not move before that and that's the problem so we have to click control set to uh, remove the keyframe and then you want to go back to frame one add the delta scale go to key make sounds to f curves and then just add the song again okay so bake sound to f curves and now it's going to work again from frame one which is important if you want to have the whole song animated okay so let's repeat the process on the two last ones and i think you're going to start doing this uh, naturally and remembering all the steps okay so write in 10,000 10, insert a song and bake sound to F frames okay so do it on the last one click the key disable on the Y and X axis bake sounds to F curves and the last one is going to be 16,000 select the song and you are done so now let's try to play the whole thing and see how it looks and as you can see looks really good obviously the song is going to be more loud later on in the song so you're not going to see the full animation right now but as you can see we have a start frame on frame 1 and a end frame on 250 and this song is going to be very long so you obviously need to make the end frame as long as the song which you can figure out later when we're going to insert the sound to the animation but if you move forward you can see that now the song is at full volume and it moves a lot higher almost to the uh, two or the two value which is the highest so let's go back to frame one and we can start messing with the settings and start making the render itself so let's just start off by increasing the quality to 100%. The frame rate I like to put at 30. And let's go downwards and make sure it is H264. Encoding is going to be MPEG4. And make sure to have MP3 because we're going to add the song now. So go into the video editing. And we're gonna add the song so sound 
add it at the desktop then insert the song you already added to the uh, cubes okay I'm just gonna save again so I'm gonna name it music 2 and always make sure to save because sometimes blender crashes as you know go back to defaults and if you click play now you can hear, hear music but since my recording software doesn't pick up the music you're not gonna hear it this is all, but when you do it on your computer, you're going to hear it. As you can see, I tried to <laughs> add some music, but I couldn't make it. The software didn't pick it up. But it works very well. Okay, so go back to pause. And we're going to keep on making this animation. And the next step I'm going to add is to add colors and lighting to the scene. Okay, so we're going to start off by adding the floor to the scene. And the way to add the floor to the scene is to just go to the bottom, left click to add a 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is going to be the spawning point of the object we're going to add. And I'm going to add a plane for the floor, and then click S to scale it up. And when you have the size you want to have, you just left click to confirm. And let's add three more planes for the lighting. It's going to be a three-point lighting, so R to rotate, G to grab, and then S to scale. Okay, so let's add a material. It's going to be an emission material. So click New, and then change to Emission, so that we actually have some light. Now, make the strength as strong as you want to have it, but I would like to make it to 7, go to the top view, numpad 7, click G to grab, go to rendered mode to see how it looks, and then click Shift D to duplicate. You can also rotate it, R set to rotate it on the set axis. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit, adjust it, and then click Shift D to duplicate in the top view, R set to rotate it on the set axis. Now click Shift D again to duplicate, R set to rotate it on the set axis and then click S to scale it down. This is going to be our backlight. Okay, so let's start adding materials to all these different objects. So I'm going to select the floor first and add some glossy material to the floor so that you can see kind of the reflection from the uh, different colors of these graphs or these uh, bars. So I'm just going to make it 0.088. And we can change this later on, and you can change it, so it doesn't really matter. Use notes for the first one, and I'm going to make it blue. So kind of a light blue. And then go to the second bar, delete the uh, material, and make a new one. I'm going to make this material, um, let's say, purple. Then select the third one, delete the material. Click New and make it, let's say, pink. And go to the fourth, make a new material. Just repeat the process and then just add new colors, basically. And you can obviously add whatever colors you want. I just want to make it kind of like a rainbow. Yeah, basically just to try to add some different kinds of colors, just to show you what you can do. Okay, I'm just going to make this one orange. And then go to the second latest, uh, last one. Delete the material, add a new material. We're going to make this one yellow. And then the last bar. Delete the material, add a new one, and make it, let's say, green. And now we have a lot of different colors. And I think it looks cool with the kind of like reflection from the colors. So go to an empath zero to go to the camera and then shift F to go to the fly cam. And again, left click to confirm if you want to have it, if you're happy with the place the camera is at. And I like this one. So I'm just going to select the floor and make sure we have some walls. So go to the edit mode tab, 
and I click E to extrude. I'm going to extrude it a little bit up and then delete the face with X. Then go back to NumPad 0, rendered mode, and as you see now we have walls, which is cool. So let's go back to object mode and I might make it a little bit less classy. Just increase the roughness a little bit. And for the rest of this tutorial, I will mostly just adjust the different things and see how it looks. I think the bars are too tall for this camera setting, uh, setup, so I have to change a little bit. So I'm going to select the camera, click Shift F to go to the fly cam mode, and try to move upwards. And when you use fly cam, you just move around with W, S, A, and D, just like in a video game. And as you can see, it's still too tall. So I'm going to go back to solid mode and I'm going to select the lighting and move it a little bit upwards. And I might scale it up a little bit too. G set to grab down the set axis, S to scale it up. And go back to the camera and then shift F to move around again. And if we try animating it now, I think it should be, the camera should be tall enough now. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. So we can start moving on in the tutorial. Okay, click pause to pause the animation. I'm going to go back to rendered mode. And I think it's starting to look really good. So I'm going to go into the camera settings now. And just make sure the clipping is about 500 so that you don't have anything outside the camera range. Okay, so let's go to the bottom. You can obviously change the sampling to make the animation higher quality or just look better. So move down to sampling and I think it looks good at 200 but the animation you saw in the beginning was actually 128 so I think it's still good enough. So let's save it one last time and It's going to take a long time to render this animation, so you might want to change to Blender Render later on. But I think for short clips, it looks really, really good, even though it takes a lot of time to render. So if you want to animate now, just go to the top and click Animation. And thanks for watching.